Well, I'm Rory Casey, and I'm doing a local sport and hero interview with Chris Coffey here. Hi, oh, Chris. Hi, well, Rory. Thanks for agreeing to take part in the SPEC Project's local sport and hero program. I'd like to start off with asking some questions about your childhood. Is that okay with you? No problem, no problem. Where did you grow up? New York. I was born, born and reared in New York all my, uh, all my life, apart from the, the time when I was actually living in England. Or a boy's in your Yeah, you know, I was actually born close by here, Daisy Hill Gardens. Uh, literally, we could take a stone and, and hit the house that I grew up in initially. Uh, so, uh, actually, a local man at the minute. All right. Uh, what age did you start, first start playing football? Uh, in memories of football, I think it, they uh, actually always had a football in my hands. You know, none of our ones can ever remember me without a football. Uh, in terms of competitively, in around the age of five or six, I actually started playing. Uh, uh, I started off more with actually GAA than soccer and mm -hmm. spent most of my younger childhood playing uh, GAA for, for Ballyhoel rather than actually soccer. and didn't actually come almost to soccer till later on, you know, in around the age of 10 or 11, where I actually started to play soccer more competitively. Uh, what was your major footballing experience during your youth? It, as I said, it was all uh, up to about the age of 11 or 12, it was all Gaelic. Uh, loved playing Gaelic. I, I played for school, played for Ballyhoel all the time, enjoyed everything about it, and then around the age of about 10 or 11, I started to spend more time with a local side here, Balabot. Uh, Mickey Maguire, God rest him, got, got me involved there, and it went from there. It started off Balabot right up through, uh, until I reached the age of about 16, and then moved on from there. Right. Uh, what, what professional club have you supported through your childhood? Oh, I, get so, I, I was actually a, a Man United fan. Uh, for a period out there, so I get slaughtered for that there. Way, up until I actually left and I went to Arsenal and I sort of fell in love with Arsenal. That's why I actually, uh, today for my sins, still follow them as a team. If I was absolutely supported now, it would be Arsenal. All right. uh, moving on from your childhood, what about Arsenal? When and how did you first find out about Arsenal looking to sign you? Uh, when it, uh, Arsenal looking to sign me, I was about 14, uh, 15. I had actually at the time, sort of when, when we played at Newry and that there, in, in local leagues and that there, it was fine. We, we were too strong a team for the local league. So I started to get invited to play for one of the sides in Belfast, Rosario. Uh, I used to go to tournaments with him, like the Fight Cup and stuff like that there. And at these here, there was a, a number of teams that actually started to ask a few questions, you know, if I'd be interested in going across uh, to sign. So in amongst all that there was Arsenal, there was, there was, along with a few others. What were, what were those other clubs that were the, the first club I actually ever spoke to was Southampton, uh, and then not in a forest, and I actually thought that's where I would have went to. Uh, I, I started off then playing for the Northern Ireland on the 15s. Things went well, and actually the first club I ended up at was Man United. Uh, they came in first, so I, I went to Man United from, for a couple of months there when I was around about 15, back and forward uh, a couple of times. and, and you know, I enjoyed, I enjoyed it, Man United, but the, at the same time, you know, I hadn't signed anything and a couple of other clubs, you know, were knocking the door. I still had, uh, Celtic had come in and then Arsenal came in there. They were actually the last club that sort of came in Arsenal. Right. Uh, did you have to do trials at Arsenal? At, at Arsenal, I, I was lucky enough in the sense that because I had actually been around and I, I was playing with the national side and that, uh, that they had seen more. So they invited me over to a, a tournament. And I went over and played at the tournament and thankfully after, I think it was after the first game, they came, they came along and said, look, we want you the same, we don't want you to go anywhere else. And that was it. I, I, I actually loved it at Arsenal. It's a massive, massive club. You, you were constantly in touch with the first team already and we were only there. So, of course, you know, anybody would want to sign for a club of that size. Yeah. How did you feel when you first signed for Arsenal? Well, I was on top of the world. You know, you, you, think, you think you're the bee's knees and you know, the, the, this is... Or, or at the time, probably you had your Man United and, and Arsenal with the big clubs in England. So, you know, them coming along and getting to play for one aim, you, you thought, you know, that, that was everything you dreamed about as a young fella wanting to play for. So, absolutely delighted. What were your first week, few weeks at Arsenal like? First few weeks at Arsenal were tough. Uh, you actually, I think what people don't see in terms of the professional game is actually the work you have to do pre season. So, they, they just land you over and they, they, they just throw you out on the pitch and you get going. You know, pre-season is actually six days a week, six, seven hours a day on the actual pitch, you know, constantly training. Massive change to your lifestyle. 
uh, at, at the time you know you're at home here and, and all you want to do is you, you want to run out with your mates and play football and you play for your clubs and stuff like that we're over there everything's they take control of everything you know they tell you what you're going to eat for breakfast they, they tell you what you're going to eat for lunch and they tell you what you're going to eat for uh, evening day and right through that process when you're not actually uh, eating you are uh, training with them constantly and a, a massive part of actually football that people don't see is resting they, they make you actually spend lots and lots of time resting actually sleeping there's four or five hours a day where they expect you to be in bed uh, what was the difference, biggest difference between football here and overseas oh the, the difference is massive i think i think it's, it could even scare you know the, the difference with actually playing in england over here when when you see teams you have maybe two or three good players in that team yeah. when you go to england everybody's brilliant and i mean everybody from the goalkeeper to the number 22 you know they're all very very good footballers very very competent very fit and all of a sudden it's where you used to think well i only have to dominate one or two players you need to have to dominate the, the entire pitch and that's where it becomes a completely different level did you play with any famous or soon to be famous players yeah i, I did uh, probably i mean but at arsenal the, the from day one it was totally mixed you know you weren't it while you were basically looked upon as a youth player initially you trained openly for the first thing, uh, so I, I mean the the, fir the first training session I did was actually with Tony Adams. Uh, he he was he was in, in my group along with several other first team guys. Uh, it 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 was you know it, the, the in terms of the famous guys obviously you had the whole first team that were you know everybody knew them and you had the big famous Arsenal back four at that point you know that still they talk about to this day. Uh, and, and my first season in Wright was probably the big star. You know, he was the guy. He was the guy who scored all the goals in that there. But then, his second season along came a, a guy, Dennis Burkamp, who just uh, yeah. for me revolutionised English football. You know what a player he was, and, and it was a, just a joy to, to actually be around the fella. Uh, did you get the chance to play in any of the big stadiums during your time? Yeah, I mean, obviously, all our home games were at Highbury, uh, and you know, then the FA Youth Cup, we, we were fortunate enough to win the FA Youth Cup. So we had we played at Old Trafford, we played at Anfield. Uh, we played at uh, Stamford Bridge, we played White Hart Lane. There was, all, all the time you actually, all the youth cup games were played at uh, the main stadiums and then all, all the sort of league games and the reserve games and that they were normally played at their second pitch but a lot of them still used the, the, the first pitch. So if you were playing for Arsenal reserves you, you expected to be playing at Highbury. What was the best experience at one of these stadiums? Uh, best experience probably actually was with the national side. Uh, we, we went with Northern Ireland to Germany and uh, we played uh, at the old Olympic Stadium, Bayern Munich Stadium, and it was a German TV, it was a massive, massive crowd, you know. At the, the stadium was full and we actually beat the Germans 1-0 out there and, and they were about to qualify for the, the under 18 European. So that was a massive, massive day for us, you know. How did you find coming back to play football after being in England? I, I found it difficult to be honest. Uh, I found it particularly the first couple of months uh, over here. And initially, it is actually quite straightforward because you're coming in the pre season and you're starting to play actually against a couple of English sides. And when we actually played against a couple of English sides, there was a few of them actually tried to buy me back again. But uh, I, I stayed on. But I struggled definitely with the Irish League for certainly the first six months where you're getting used to it. Football is totally different, you know. It's it's they do play a lot more football. The Irish League was a wee bit more kick and rush, you know. It, it, they didn't dwell on the ball as much as in England. You're encouraged all the time to be on the ball, constantly looking the ball all the time. With the Irish League, it was you know with that, get the ball uh, up front faster. So I did. I definitely will admit to struggling badly for about the first six months of, of the Irish League. If you could go back to your playing days and change anything, what would it be? It's very difficult to go back and change anything, you know. But I mean, the, the reason I actually came home was because I, I I'm not I don't I'm not lightning quick, you know. And, and you've got to be lightning quick to play, if, uh, you know, at the highest level without a shadow of a doubt. And while I was quick enough, I was missing that extra half a yard yard of pace. That would be the only thing I could possibly go back and change, you know. And even to think that could you change it? Who knows? Who was the who was the best player you played with? Played with easy Dennis Burkamp, you know, I had the pleasure of playing with that man and he's just on another planet, you know, he, he actually used to spend a lot of time with the younger players and tell them that he would only ever be happy the day that he could do with his feet the, what he could do with his hands and I think the guy went a long way in trying to prove it but uh, what a player. Who's the best player you played against? 
played against, I actually had the pleasure of playing against a lot of what would be the English generation, the, the Rio Ferdinands, the Ashley Coles, the Frank Lampards, all those guys, even the Scholes, the Backhams, the Kings, played against all those guys. But the one guy that stands out was the actual day we played Liverpool and Steven Gerrard was just on another level. You know, you, you think these guys, normally in, over there in England, you, you do get close to these guys. And, and you know, sometimes you wonder, are they all that they're made out to be? But the day I played against that guy, I never got near him. He was absolutely amazing. Uh, who was the best manager you played under? I would say at the time definitely the one I liked most was Pat Rice, uh, absolute gentleman, so driven in what he wanted to achieve, so demanding of you as a footballer, he wouldn't accept you know anything other than, than the best that you could produce and I, I love the man for it and to this day I think we still talk to him and oh, what a great guy. What was the best advice you were ever given? Best advice ever given and I would say it's definitely believe believe in yourself you know it's it's the big difference between playing here and playing in england is that when you go over there everybody believes in the superstar whether they are or not is irrelevant they will tell you how good they all are and they will go out on the pitch and they'll try and show you we tend to be a bit shy or we don't have the self-belief in ourselves and the, the best thing that somebody says look just take that self-belief and run with it because Always, you won't play at any level. Is that the advice you give to a young player? Yeah, I mean, it's it's part of it. Definitely for a young fellow over here, if they've any aspirations for going to England, they've got to really believe in their ability. You know, almost borderline arrogance. You know, but but keeping it with with good self confidence, and also if you are not light and quick, and you are not extremely sharp over a very short distance, don't torture yourself because over there everybody is. With moving into management with, now with nearly under sixteens. Do you see this as a plan to get into senior management? I, I, I don't know. I, to be totally honest, I'm heading more towards the coaching side of it than the management side of it. Uh, I, I do a lot of management in my, in my business life without sort of carrying it on to the football pitch. I, I like to be sort of in the mix with players. You know, I've just recently done the, the coaching badges there and thoroughly enjoyed more mingling with players and, and doing stuff with players than actually having to take a step back and, you know, and be their boss. You know? So probably more coaching than management. How do you think things have changed between your time playing and now? It's it's not that they have changed. I mean, the, the, the modern game at the minute is it's just it's just getting faster and faster and faster and faster. You know, back back when I, I was playing, there was the, these a lot of these guys were sort of their lifestyles were brought into question. You know, in terms of the drinking that they were doing, even drugs, all that type of stuff. Nowadays, they just live their entire lives twenty four seven. You know, these guys down to the point of all they literally have to do is just keep breathing and these guys will do everything else for them. So it's a totally different world. I think it's extremely hard for anyone over here to, to get across the, the top level. I think you can get across to possibly the lower half of that Premier League and, and in your championships. But, you know, these elite clubs are, are just, they're way, way, way in a different in, in level. No, but that has been at a few corporate events with you. He says you love your food. What's your favourite dessert? <laughs> Aye, well, I think I'd, I'd, <laughs> I would definitely have to say, uh, I, I definitely, I, he knows I like a bun. I, I like a bun. I sort of, it keeps changing as you get older. Back then it was more chocolate cake and stuff like that, whereas now I like a butterfly bun. So I'll definitely, what I'll do is I'll buy him a couple of butterfly buns and have a few with him. Thank you very much for coming down. No problem at all, Roy. Nice to have met you.